think the missing number problem, some of these easy problems are really good for warm up before an interview. If you're like me, sometimes a cup of coffee isn't enough. You have to kind of clean out the cobwebs. And the reality is if you do these things professionally, if you're a professional software data engineer, it's not like you're actually doing algorithms all day long. Having said that, you know, it can be kind of relaxing uh, to do these once in a while. So anyway, this is the missing number problem. And basically we're given a list called nums and it contains n distinct numbers, which are in the range zero through n. Those brackets mean that it's inclusive. Inclusive means that if n is like five, for example, the list will actually include zero through five. And we want to return the only number in that range that is missing from the array. So for example, if we're given nums 301, obviously the number that's missing in that range is two. Let's say that we're given an array zero and one. What is missing from that range or zero, one, and two? Well, that's kind of an interesting edge case. It turns out that the missing number is one plus the biggest number in that range. So if it's zero through one, the length of the array is two and two is missing from the array. So that's the missing number. All right if that makes sense. So let's take a look at what my solution was. I actually posted this um, a month ago and uh, there was a lot of contention about it <laughs> at the time, but I did get a lot of views, so I thought I'd post a video about it. And anyway, basically we have the list, it's called nums, right? And the first thing we have to do is we just sort the list. So if the list started out as zero, three, two, we sort it, and now it's zero, two, three, all right? And then we iterate through the list with i. i starts at zero and it goes through the length of the list one by one. You actually, you can think of i as the non-missing number, if that makes sense. So if it starts at zero, um, and then you take nums i, nums i should also be zero. If it's not zero, if it's one, then the loop breaks and we return i. And it turns out that that, that is the missing number. So um, if zero is in that list, then it goes to one and the ith number in nums is two, then we know that one is the missing number and so we return if it gets to the very end of the list, that's the edge case I talked about earlier, then we take the max number in nums and we add one to it. In terms of time complexity, the Python sort is log n, um, but we don't have to add uh, n time complexity to log n because the function will break or it will return i as soon as it gets to the ith number. So that means in most cases, we don't actually get to the end of the list. Hope that makes sense. And uh, yeah, appreciate your comment.